Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets. Now I'm bringing around to bite-sized pieces. Today, what I really want to talk to you about, and really the only thing that's, uh, that is uh, as far as like major, are fees. And uh, fees are outrageous. And I want to show you a graphic from Masari, which goes over the different fees for all the different uh, top crypto and digital asset projects and how that relates to what we would consider uh, massive fees and the network effect and how it all kind of ties in together. So we'll take a look at what's going on uh, in just that specific aspect, but I wanna go over a couple of things first of all. First, um, this week I'll be doing a deep dive into Avalanche. I've been getting a lot of requests for that. And uh, when I talk about on this channel, invest in people, uh, if you are talking about a good team, look at this team, this is amazing. And uh, I'll be doing a deep dive uh, for that a little bit later. Also, um, all these deep dives and different projects that we do, we're not gonna put them on Digital Asset News anymore. It's gonna go over to Dan Cliffs. And the reason is because Digital Asset News is just for, for news and a little bit of trading, now, just like the basics of basic stuff. But when we start to really go deep into things like World Mobile Token and uh, Ask, and of course, Avalanche, I really wanna do that on a separate channel so people who are a little bit more advanced can find this out and go from there. And I'll let everybody know uh, when I drop uh, th uh, these videos and do these things, but I just wanna make sure that it's separate so I don't overload people, especially for people who are new. If you're new, you're in the right place. And then uh, also today, I'm gonna talk about a little bit, little bit of trading. We're gonna do Trinity trading, which is, uh, if you're new, this is the easiest way possibly to do any type of uh, uh, trading. I'm not a big trader, but we're going to use a little bit of technical, a little bit of sentiment, and a little bit of fundamentals to find a top pick. And we'll be doing that live at uh, 12.30 Mountain Time, 1.30 Central, and 2.30 Eastern. So uh, that is already uh, in the schedule. So check that out. I'll link at the very end as well. But you should get a notification if you're subscribed to Digital Asset News. All right. So let's take a look at what the heck is going on in the market. So first of all, let me back up real quick. So the spotlight itself, we've got a total market cap of 2.4 trillion. Fantastic. Everything's good. We had a bit of a dip yesterday and uh, people were losing their minds and uh, I didn't get it. I'm just like, it's like 10%, 16%. Who cares? And uh, this is one of the, the, the greatest assets of uh, or aspects of being just an investor. I don't really care about the dips. I, I just... I don't really, you know, see the see the whole point. People get worked up, and I'm like, and and they they start to talk about, well, this is why it dipped, and this is what happened, and blah blah. blah. I'm like, I don't care why it happened. I don't know, unless someone comes to me and says, you know what, uh, Peter, Sh oh, I'm not even say his name, a gold bug came out and said that he is Satoshi Nakamoto, and there's proof. I'd probably pay attention to that. Other than that, I just don't care because I know where things are going in the future. I'm not here for a quick you know, 18% gain in something. Uh, I, I'm here for years and years and years. And uh, so whatever. Anyhow, so this is what we got as far as like Bitcoin. Bitcoin's doing good at 56,000. Ethereum's at up above 4,000. No idea why. We're going to see what's going on with that. Binance coin, Dogecoin, 49 cents and so on and so forth. We're using Trade the Chain, which we'll dive into the sentiment analysis. Uh, if you're a trader, uh, you just click on this projected range and just take a look at what's potentially going to be up in the next hour or so. So 5% with 90% accuracy. Look at these. EOS, Omisego, Horizon, Yearn, uh, Velas, Veas, Aeon. So take a look at that. All right. That's fantastic. Let's take a look at what's going on in today. So the fees. <laughs> fees. Before we get into this, let me just show you something. Um, if you're wondering about fees and using Uniswap and decentralized exchange, all that good stuff. So when we go to like Uniswap, you know, Uniswap version three is out. Hey, great. So when you click on that and try to do any kind of uh, swapping, usually it's going to say this, no liquidity, so sad, too bad. And then you got to, you know, click the trade with V2. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, this is zero XMR for ETH and I'm going to swap anyway. And I'm going to confirm the swap and uh, whatever. And then what's going to come up, I'll link this a little bit. The gas fee is $187. Let me take a screenshot of this because you can't see it right here, but I will put it in post. The gas fees are $187. So you're going to, it's for $800, 0 0.2 ETH and 187, you're going to spend almost a thousand bucks. I mean, total. So I'm going to reject that. That's probably a good idea. And that's what's going on with fees. And everybody's like, well, who cares? Because Ethereum is going to be fantastic. Maybe so. I don't know. But uh, we take a look over here. 
And then when we take a look at the fees itself, let me blow this up so you can see exactly what I am talking about. So this website was actually shared to me from uh, Ada Ape. And if you don't follow Ada Ape, <laughs> this guy loves Cardano, if you couldn't tell. And he's a smart guy or gal, I don't know who he is, uh, or them, I have no idea. And uh, he shared this and he talks about, hey, Cardano moved 9.7 billion in transaction volume in the last 24 hours. ETH moved 24 billion. Here's the fees. ETH charged 88 million, ADA charged 18,000. And I was like, hmm. So I took a look at this uh, nice little website, which I will link in the description below. And we can see that uh, Ethereum is the top one here. Here's the price, change, market cap, real volume, smart contract volume, transaction volume, 32 billion, adjusted volume, 24, active address, and so on, and fees, $88 million in fees. So, uh, hey, uh, if you're collecting fees, good for you. Dogecoin, 96, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin, even Bitcoin is at 5.7. And, uh, you know, we're at the, you know, massively all-time highs. And here's Cardano, 18,000, $18,000. And they had $9 billion in volume. So if you're looking at, so they had a third, but it was only 18,000 bucks. And then you can take a look at Litecoin and do all the things and you can compare it. Sure, go right ahead. XRP, 21,000 for 2 billion. Eh, that's kind of weird. Zcash, Verge, and then Digibyte. Look at Digibyte, 12 million, 5.6 dollars. Wow. So that is essentially what's going on. It makes you think about fees. It makes you think real hard about fees, honestly. And really what it all comes down to, you know, as far as like, well, how much is it going to cost us? What's going to happen? How is it all going to take effect? Well, first of all, some people will say, well, you can't really compare that because, you know, Cardano has no smart contracts. That's very true. And people will say, well, Cardano is just vaporware and all these different ones are vaporware because they don't do sh anything. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Ethereum does. But uh, really, if you think about it, I, this, is, this is my thought. What does Ethereum really do as far as decentralized exchanges. I mean, yes, you can swap for another ERC-20 token. That's great, right? But um, uh, I mean, what else are we really doing? Are we, are we putting mortgages on as far as a smart contract? Can we uh, buy and sell properties and, and, and put them on, on there like that? Are the smart contract functionality really gaining a foothold in real world usage as far as like land and, and uh, just like, like banking? Of course, you know, uh, you know, DeFi and things like that, sure. But um, we're still in its infancy, I, I think. And even though people will say, well, Cardano doesn't have this or Digibyte doesn't have that or, or whoever, whatever it is. Sure, we're all in price discovery mode and speculation. Let's just be honest. And uh, is everything worth this type of uh, market cap? No, I don't think so. Absolutely not. But uh, it just goes to show you that this is where we're at. So the question then becomes, what's going to happen? Well, if you're looking for uh, some great prospects, look no further than EIP 1559 for Ethereum, which is going to be uh, greenlit in July. Now, just to be clear, this was uh, written on March 5th, so things may have changed a little bit. But uh, just so you know, EIP 1559 will be packaged with the London Fork coming in July. And uh, this is how it works. Traditionally, a user sends a gas fee to a miner for a transaction to be included in the block, which we just saw, which I just got hosed uh, 200 bucks for like an $800 transaction, 20% roughly, eh, 25%. That gas fee will now be sent to the network itself as a sort of burn called base fee with only an optional tip paid to miners. So my question is this. If miners are making all that money, are, are they really going to be like, this sounds fantastic. We'll take tips. And then, you know, it'll go to the, you know, uh, the network and that'll be it. Well, let's see. I don't think they're going to be too happy about it. Minority mining pool flex pool launched a marketing campaign against the EIP. Several mining pools. Minority pools joined, followed by majority pools, Ethereum and Spark pool. Over 60% of Ethereum's network hash power is now against the proposal. F2 pool is the largest pool in favor with some 10%. I know I read another article where... Ethereum network is like, who cares? We don't really care. And we're going to move ahead and uh, get in line or get out. So this all, July is going to be s just straight fireworks because July, August is when this is going to go into effect on top of uh, with the um, uh, Alonzo in integration, you're going to have uh, <laughs> smart contracts on Cardano around the same time. So really, if you're going to see if, this is my, my, my thought. If you're going to see any type of uh, traction happen for Cardano, it's going to be around that time. And if nobody moves over to Cardano when they have smart contracts, 
then I'm going to pull a Mike Novogratz and hang up my spurs because that will be it. Uh, I don't think uh, you could really say too much about that, but I truly believe that it is going to happen. Uh, it's going to happen right here with uh, World Mobile Token, and they're solving a, uh, a problem for 4 billion people in a trillion dollar industry. World Mo Mobile Token will be minted as a native asset on the Cardano blockchain. If you want to watch that video, check it over on Dan Clips. There's a link in the description where it says follow Dan. There's three things. One is uh, Twitter and the other one is Dan Clips. You can find it quite easily. So that is what's going on. And if you're not too really, you know, enthused about these, uh, these uh, fees and whatnot, you can always take a look at Zero Dot Exchange. Uh, I'll link it in the description. I don't have a link in the description right now. Zero Dot Exchange, uh, they use all these chains so you can find the cheapest aspect. Also, uh, Avalanche, uh, if you don't have any Avalanche, you can send over Tether or a little bit of that, and they will give you a little bit of Avalanche to make transactions and buy more Avalanche to make it super cheap. And this is why I am doing that uh, enormous uh, dive into Avalanche, because I think uh, it could be pretty darn big as time goes on, but who knows? So that is that, that is it for today. Um, there's just a couple of things more I'd like to make mention of. And that is, actually, no, it's not today. To finish it all up, excuse me. Fees and the network effect. And people talk about this all day long. And even I talk about this with Voyager. How the network effect, Metcalf's Law, da 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 everything's going to be great, kumbaya. But in all honesty, um, you can lose a lot of market share real fast. And things move so quickly in crypto and digital assets. Really what people want and actually i actually stole this from kim.com because he was talking uh to tone vase and and uh Wu, whatever his name is about bitcoin versus bitcoin cash and he goes look he goes you know i i had one of the largest internet websites and uh, i can tell you what people want they want things uh, cheap they want them fast and they just want better service and he goes if you're looking for transactions uh, bitcoin ain't it and it's going to be bitcoin cash and that's why he's building things like bitcoin cash and then for me, I think about this, um, if these, if there was a, another competitor which had smart contracts right now, Ethereum would be in the dust. It's it just, it, it is what it is. And uh, people talk about the network effect and everything else. Well, here's Blockbuster and look what happened to them. People said, you know what? I'm tired, of, sick and tired of these damn fees are returning it. And I'm old enough to remember because I used to pay, have to pay it. And then if you didn't rewind it, well, when they had CDs, yeah, uh, VHS even so. Uh, it would be a lot. It would be expensive. And then you had to actually get up out of your house. It was just awful. Just horrible times, kids. And then on top of that, so that's just Blockbuster. And that was just, you know, a little bit of money. And then Netflix came around. And Netflix is like, hey, don't have to do anything. Don't have to rewind anything. And guess what? It's only nine ninety nine. Well, I'll do that all day long. And then that happened. And of course, if you take a look at Network Effect, what about MySpace? What happened to MySpace? MySpace was the hugest social media platform uh, when everything came out in the early days of the internet. Now look what we have, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, and everything else. Make it easier, faster, cheaper. I mean, you can't get much cheaper than Facebook. Where Facebook messed up is that it's super expensive in all the different data that they collect, and that's why they're losing market share. And then, of course, the last one would be banks. Why would you go to and use a bank when DeFi is going to take over? Why? And, of course, right now Ethereum rules that roost, but uh, as we just see, faster, cheaper, easier, better. Who knows what it's going to be? That's why I hedge my bet and I own both. Anyhow, so that's it for today. Uh, the last thing I, I will just say is this, is that um, I believe that there is going to be a bigger dip coming up. Um, remember that in the United States, we used to pay taxes on April 15th. We got to push back a month to May 17th. Right now it is May 11th. So we got about six days or so. Expect a dip in that time frame. So you'll probably find some uh, some great deals. And if you're looking to uh, do your taxes, I did a great video. Well, I did a pretty good video about CryptoTrader.tax. Users of Dan, they get 20% uh, off, link in the description. And it shows you exactly how to do it. And again, from the time that I signed up to actually filled it out and got it to my CPA, it took me like 30 minutes. On top of that, if you don't want to pay taxes at all, think about a crypto IRA. This is iTrust. I've been using those for well, now a year and some change. 
and I'm actually maxed out for this year. And uh, if you don't like to pay taxes on your crypto, why don't you just put it into a crypto, or in my case, a Roth IRA. I did a video, it's about 20 minutes so or so long, and I explained the difference between a traditional, a SEP, a Roth IRA, how this all works, and how you can save a boatload of money. Oh, also in Q3 now, uh, you're going to be, uh, not only will you have the assets that you put in there uh, to be uh, appreciate, and you can take out tax-free at a certain time frame, but also the rewards they give, because in like a Cardano and like an Ethereum, like a Polkadot, which you can all put into your Roth IRA, the rewards are also tax-free. So uh, take a look at that. And uh, viewers of Dan, they get the first month uh, free. And that is it for today. So look, if you liked that video or if you hated it, <laughs> you can put a thumbs up or a thumbs down. I expect a lot of thumbs down, especially from people who love Ethereum. But uh, it's not a knock. It just is what it is. And uh, we'll see how it all works out. Also consider subscribing and uh, that's it for today. So thanks so much. Also don't forget that we'll be doing that uh, Trade the Chain, our Trinity trading in a couple hours. So check us out, we pick one live winner. And our last winners uh, were pretty darn good. And we'll go over all the ones that we have picked over the last three months and how they've all done. Thanks so much for watching, appreciate it. See you on the next one.